Thanks for uh, thanks for watching this year's presentation. Last but not least, Josh Milano, hydrogen fuel cell and safety. Hi, my name is Joshua Lowry. And I'm Juan Alvina. For the past few weeks, we were working with a company called Mentor from Boy in designing and starting and constructing uh, UAV uh, powered by hydrogen fuel cell. We started being organized by what is a UAV. So a UAV is an unmanned aerial vehicle, and they can come in many different shapes and sizes. Um, like a typical fox hopper zone, you see those cool ski videos, or like uh, you hear a lot of those drum strikes in the news. And so it, it can range from any aerial vehicle that is unmanned, given the name. And, because, and they, can, they can do a lot of things, like advantages being like, it's without a person in there, you can reach speed with, so G forces don't kill people. Or, um, or be able to take risks without having to, you know, risk a human life. So the actions of these uh, VAPs are boundless because it's an indirect concern against humans. Humans can put VAPs without being fair. So the use for this could be also the entire could be for health and for industry. I want to talk about this in the next slide. So this the AAP industry has been great for the past decade. And we can see why because of the industry uh, uses that the UAP has. One of the cases is young ones from filming it. And we're up to the Any of those cool shots you see in movies, like that really cool one with Hogwarts and Harry Potter, that was filmed by a drum. It's also uh, that the filming uses. Um, shopping delivery, right here in Colorado, Amazon is actually uh, just built a few delivery areas that um, they're going to be testing their drone delivery system out on. So here soon, uh, the next package that you get from Amazon might be delivered by a drone. And then uh, construction safety and inspections, um, instead of having to send somebody up into dangerous areas, they can set a drone to scan the area. And so, um, it's just for safety reasons. And so, with all these different uses, like drones are on the up and up, they're getting big. So, we analyze the phase of this pattern is personally increasing. So, we do two charts. One, the UAP production, and one, the United States is spending money dollars on the UAP industry. As we can see, the 2016 was 2.5 million of drugs produced, and now for the last day, we're expecting about 7 million units of drugs produced, where we are exporting an increase of about 5%. After that, we can see the difference of the local economic impact and the other spending. The impact is way higher than we can see in a linear graph that the spending that is consumed by AP, not only in the industry, but also as uh, entertainment or private. Uh, this is the According to Britain Tech Magazine, uh, uh, 2.5 million new pieces of the Western State and Shenan Road. And pollution by 7 million pieces of the Western State. And with all these UAVs, they have power, right? And so, the next, uh, with all these UAVs, multiple batteries are produced. And so, oh, so we figured out what our problem has to be involved in the environment. The issue is that human activity has been affecting the environment and climate change. Also, the industry, the commercial industry, how this is going to be economic fair and how this is going to be used. And also, we talk about the energy that we are powered by. This is going to be a concern for black providers. So, this time we, we analyze the effect of black providers and how fine fuel cell buyers are the ones that are used for energy production. This time we we found out that nearly 99 million of what you mean our country buyers have produced every year that contain a system in the United States. One million of dry fuel buyers are being, are being, are being bought. And also 8,000 tons of fuel buyers can have been mounted. So we're thinking about 8,000 tons that are being not recycled, not even being concerned on the environment that have been mounted. What happened with these batteries that have been mounted? Well, to start with, the batteries in inside them as a chemical reaction. Of the, it can be alkaline, it can be cobalt, it can be copper, and battery definition of each battery. And these chemical reactions, while they end up in landfill, they secretly and then they start to consume not only the environment, but also can affect the humans, like as you see, like human disease or like a genetic mutation can happen if you can consume this. So for the hypothesis, we figured out a way to use these three concepts and synthesize it in this one. The UAV should be powered by renewable energy sources. The use of renewable energy in the UAV will reduce the energy and will improve factors and will improve renewable energy 
efficiency in both the commercial and the social All right, so why do you use length? Um, so when we decided to use the hydrogen fuel cell, um, we uh, did some research and when we were looking at different types of uh, UAVs, uh, we noticed that a lot of them required more power than we were able to output. And so, uh, like for example, if we were to use like typical quadcopter design, our hydrogen fuel cell is out about 20 watts. Our quadcopter would require about 900. And so it, it was feasible for us to power it. But um, most of that power is going into generating lift, upward motion. But if we didn't have to use any power to create that, as in being lifted by a balloon of some sort, you know, um, uh, we wouldn't have to use any power. We could use all of our power for horizontal motion and steering. And so that's why we decided to use this. Um, and then Project Pilot Runner is this uh, project we found online that's an open source lift project for something much, much smaller than this and using micro batteries. But because of it, we were able to scale everything up and use this uh, design uh, for something anyway, um, to make the project feasible. So one of our big challenges you know, in training and breeding are the high use of what they weigh that they have a use of them, being two times higher than the normal cycle battery used for having that use of the Hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, we use a TEM hydrogen fuel cell, which stands for proton exchange, exchange membrane. And so the way it works is that on that side over there, um, there is going to be hydrogen entering on the left. And, and so, so you get that anode, and the anode is going to strip the le uh, electrons from it. And so the electrons are then going to go through that wire on top here. You'll see it on the video in a second. And so once the hydrogen enters, it's going to hit that anode. And then the anode is going to strip it of its electrons. And then the electrons are going to be going through that wire at the top there. And then once they enter it and pass through that whole circuit, it's going to create power. While oxygen that's on the other side, hydrogen is going through the electrolyte in the center. And they're going to meet together in the cathode and mix together to become water. And water is the only byproduct of the hydrogen fuel cell process. So being water, there is byproduct of the hydrogen fuel cell stores. We just have to go with it because it's not. And by the way, we'll clear our questions and we'll clear all the issues that involves environmental issues that we talk about. So being water and each two of you each two of will not have the effect we think in fact that like the water can in and out of land deal. Uh, here in the corner, we have uh, just more examples of why we chose the balloon at the point. Uh, over here, you can see the quad pocket design that we are thinking of. Um, and the only way it can in the air is through aerodynamic lift, moving parts, lifting it upward so it can fly, uh, which requires way too much power. Over here, we have a picture of our balloon. And so, yes, we do have a little bit of dynamic lift from the motors on the bottom. Most of it is coming from aerostatic lift, lift that. Um, it's, there's no moving part, it's just being lifted by the helium and the balloon itself. So we prefer a theoretical equation to be able to know the height and the diameter of the balloon, and also at least to know the cubic feet, the helium amount to be required to lift up uh, one point three kilograms for the height of our electric system, and also the only hydrogen fuel We also need to know the air pollution correction to be able to the plane to be able to be stable and to have a plane to force. So we're the first equation, the area can give dimension, which we we put our temperature here as much in the computer, and also we check it via the bar and the PSI that we have to put into the room. We also check the air density dimension for feeding density that was the air that was going inside the room. Uh, after having that we figured out that we need two three point seven pounds of so that will be around uh, 14.42 of uh, After knowing that, we use the urbanization correction equation to know the exact um, amount of diameter and length of the deposit of the plane, not only to have a you know, cubic field of feeling, but also to be exact for me in the way we are thinking or in the way we are thinking So after the only question we found out that we need a 5.2 meter point and a 1.7 meter in that meter for the length. And we use around 46.42 meters for the length of the length. Alright, so we're going to 
All right, so to the construction of this thing, or this balloon here in specific, um, we started off just by laying a sheet of paper on the ground and uh, drafting our design for the balloon. And uh, then we uh, took a one millimeter thick sheet of plastic, the kind of like came and used, like hanging over the wall while we uh, uh, thrown it on the ground, and uh, we folded it in half, and we just cut along the line, and then that's over here. And then on the team, we just duct tape it together, um, and uh, that was pretty much the balloon design. Um, over here, we are filling it up at a gas station with the uh, tire air pump to make sure that there are no holes in it. So we just for a low budget, we tried to have the same thing as like a mylar or a or or polyethylene foil that is used like <coughs> in a real plane or like in a real plane. In this case, we tried to find this plastic that was one millimeter thick that would give us that pressure so that it would escape and also that the wind would blow. So we use a helicopter for the ratio shape ratio and the ratio is for one. Uh, we use the shape to scale our balloon and of course increase the diameter and the length. And we also protect the thing as you can see uh, to be able to be an outdoor another wing. So each angle of the thing has to be 120 degrees. So our electrical system, the power system, is all based on the hydrogen fuel cell, which is this thing right here. Um, so this is the oxygen intake up here. These are the hydrogen uh, canisters that we have. And then this is kind of the brain of surgery down here. And, uh, and it, it starts off, it starts up off of one line of battery, which is kind of disappointing because we want to run it without any batteries, but this one battery is nothing compared to like the four or five that uh, that is another UAV type um, will be using um, to power it. Um, another, uh, another part of our electrical system, oh, here's an example of the cancer. Um, we have our rudders. They're kind of janky right now. Transportation really messes with everything, but um, they move, kind of. And so, <laughs> and so uh, this is the steering system. Um, with the motor pushing, uh, but we lift it up, I can pack the motor, so we might do that later. Um, but with the motors pushing it, the extent to direct the air current, so we were able to kind of fish shield it and do some drift and some the objective stuff. And so, um, and then another piece of equipment that we wanted to use was our Pluto Luna, and that was going to be the brain of the system. But, um, so these are examples of the parts that we use. There is our RC receiver, which is uh, what is connected to our transmitter, which is what our remote is. And we have that of communicating, and that is what ends up being like the controlling of everything. We didn't think that our receiver would be as good as it was, but it is. And so uh, our electronic system controls our GFT, our, our wire connected to the motors, and we've also supplied power to the whole system. Um, and then we have our servo, which are, is what are connected to the fin, they turn 90 degrees, and that is how um, we are using the fin system. And then our motors themselves, are very tight, but very powerful motors. We both have cuts and burns in our hands. Um, so those are kind of the back of everything. That's what they get those in the air and those get those in the air. So for the coding, we use the Arduino Uno board and we use the Arduino software. Just here is a sketch of part of the coding, which is why we should create a new library to tell the software what we're going to do with the things of the output and the inputs that will go to the servos and to the motors. In this case, uh, the beam change in is a library that we use, and we tell the we tell the Arduino what kind of power, what kind of output we want for each servo and each servo, so we have a specific control between the RC receiver and the other cell. Also, we use the in the equation for the rotation and the axis only to the RC servo, so we can do the lot of our control with you. We can end up using the Arduino Uno because, uh, well, the receiver ended up being able to do everything we wanted the Uno to do, and uh, then it was a lot of weight. We didn't have to put another circuit on there. We included it on here because we are good at coding, and it was kind of cool. So why not? All right. And so this is kind of a diagram of the whole system. Or what would have been if the Arduino Uno had done there? Um, if without it, the circuit would have just tricked uh, directly to the receiver. And so the, the fuel cell hooked up right into the ESCs, which is then to the motors. And then the ESCs are providing power to the receiver, which is then in turn providing power to the servos. And so that's kind of how the whole system works. All right.
Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so things that we would do differently or we would like to change is uh, we were really, really hoping not to have to use a battery. It was kind of a disappointment that we had to use one. But like I said, the one battery that we're using is very small. It's a fraction of what another UAV of this size that you need to run on. And then issues with the current. Um, I was a fool and I plugged in the fuel cell directly into the receiver and uh, I underestimated the power of it, so I exploded in the ESC and our first receiver. And so if we were to do it again, I would be more cautious of that. So one of the issues that we have was the size of the hydrogen fuel source. Nowadays, the fuel source uh, technologies are not people enough to be able to be better than a battery for types of these drugs and the size or the use itself. But if we put it in scale, an uh, example uh, like companies that have actual fuel source that have 100 watts per time fuel source, they're of course more expensive than we can achieve for this battery. But uh, using these fuel source, they are way better than using a light battery or using any other sort of electric source of energy. And then the material balloon Josh kind of touched on earlier. Uh, we would like to have use a mylar because not only is it stronger, it's lighter, and it's just more aesthetically pleasing. It's very shiny. So. Okay, so by ourselves, we did the analysis and we compared, in the case of the TV charge, we compared all the selfish charge to in terms of average numbers of uh, electro battery in the loop and of uh, hydrogen fuel cell in green. As you can see, the electro battery pollution and compared to hydrogen fuel cell is way worse in some way. And also, the hydrogen fuel cell exceeds the electro battery by four times the amount of average numbers. And uh, in this pure uh, determination, we saw that the hydrogen will have actually has hydrogen and oxygen constant flow. These two will be able to keep a source of energy compared to the light that as soon as you use it, will start to use charge. Alright, and uh, for future studies, not only um, with uh, hydrogen fuel cells in general, this particular hydrogen fuel cell, um, this was shown on the FSI program, so future FSI scholars will be able to use the exact same fuel cell in the future. And so, um, but uh, fuel cells in general, um, there's been big pushes to make this a big source of energy. Um, Toyota and Honda have, uh, released, have released hydrogen fuel cell cars, and um, California has invested a lot of money in creating hydrogen uh, fueling stations all along the state. And so, um, investments in infrastructure and, um, and production has been people's ability to push forward with the energy of the future. With the final conclusion, we have three statements of those uh, efficiency of community and the hydrogen fuel source. So, the first one, hydrogen fuel source and the second efficient way to block UAV use in infrastructure. Right. And the second one is that while at this size, the hydrogen fuel cell is the most practical. At this small size, it would be better just to use electro batteries. But the bigger you scale it up, like if you scale it up to one of those delivery drones I was talking about earlier, the hydrogen fuel cell feeds out electro batteries and efficiency. Or if you wanted to go big and you scaled it up to a full size blend, like the kind of you know, fly around ball games, it is several times more efficient. Um, they use three different engines that produce about 1.2 kilowatts, and uh, they use about 20 gallons of fuel per hour. Um, and uh, so that three engines all together create 20 kilowatts of energy. A, not 20 kilowatts, 1.2 kilowatts. And so um, a hydrogen fuel cell, you could buy one of a similar weight that could easily produce two or three. And, but that's a lot of money, so you could even create a hybrid uh, blend that would be able to produce a similar effect. And our last thing is that water is damaged to not be reduced in the transition hydrogen fuel cell as a result of the so, of course, for the heat to put it will be much better as a type of oil to be higher than you can afford to make the There are. Now we have a few acknowledgments. We would like to thank Peter and Kit um, from Boeing, uh, helping us all the way from Washington, giving us some pointers along the way. I would like to uh, appreciate uh, the help of Shane Murphy, our advisor. He always was very active helpful, not only in our research, but also in our chamber and all the things that we have been thinking. And then Excel and Sunfor Energy. Uh, Excel sponsored Josh's stay in research here, while Sunfor Energy sponsored my stay and Excel sponsored my energy. 
And so without that one thing, what did I say? <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> she could hear you a little, little time. If, if we had more time, and if we were to redo it, we'd probably get well, like a hard instructor instead of the soft instructor that we have now. And now, nothing can't fly. It can definitely fly. We just need more money. And we need to get an HD. Christopher, I'm ready. So, could you go into like more detail about why you need the live mode to uh, help with the heavy tools? All right, so. Um, the light bulb was needed to not only start up the fan on the fuel cell, but um, the fuel cell that we got, instead of being its own kind of engine, it ended up being acting more like a, like a hybrid car. It ended up increasing the efficiency of the battery by about three or four times, which is huge. Um, but instead of being able to run independently, this is more like a helper for the So why do we our main time we're doing battery and hydrogen fuel cell works because the hydrogen prototype is quite modest that I've seen right now. I thought the hydrogen fuel cell does is that it improves the efficiency of compression gains and it comes out of the light bulb. So it's far better. That's what I'm saying. It's far better. And it's super better. Mm -hmm. Sorry. 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 Well, when we were talking to our members from Boeing, um, when you talk to them the first time, they're just kind of like, yeah, come up with something and we'll give you a prove it. So we, so we spent a lot of time thinking about what we wanted to do. And uh, we got a lot of ideas. All, everything was things about flying in aerospace and stuff like that since Boeing. So um, we came up with ideas like, uh, one of our big ones that we have was like a VR drone that you're able to like look around while you flew. We thought that was really cool. But uh, they wanted us to really come up with a problem that was like an issue of the world that we could try to fix. And we had gone back to environmental issues and power. And uh, I had worked a little bit with the hydrogen fuel cell prior um, up in Detroit with a great star I was working with. And so I that sounded cool. And Josh agreed. And that's how we got here today. How long is the hang time? Not good, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't. Uh, helium, so we need about 48.3 cubic feet of helium. And, uh, it's, and like I said, the material that we made and the duct tape perimeter is not very good at retaining the gas. And so I bought um, a 55 cubic feet uh, <laughs> tank helium for my good friend Chuck. And, uh, but, um, even with that, and, uh, it wasn't able to fill the whole thing because how much we're losing constantly. Uh, so, if we were able to retain all, you know, the math should say that the hang time should last indefinitely. We match the pull of the uh, helium to the pull of gravity. So, wherever we put it, it should stay if it was stable. We would build the power again. Yeah, so the amount of hydrocarbon that can be well, you can keep it like with an iron, uh, iron cylinder, or it can be like weight well, and that will just be able to not have any weight well. Or even a clothing iron. It, it, it melts together really easily. And that's what we would do. We would eliminate a lot of our issues that we're having. Not enough room. So we would have had to buy um, we would have to buy a 46 unit of my about three or four times for it to actually um, get to the size of the And we already got super over budget with things like the hydrogen fuel cell and the hydrogen recharging that we got to fill these little tanks that we got. So yeah. Do you want to go over Well, you mentioned environmental impact. Um, is how far back can you look at uh, the environmental impact of acquiring helium and hydrogen as opposed to, say, producing lipo and their comparison to their effects on the environment? <laughs> 
Well, mining might have an impact on it. It's not like we're running out of the 